All right, I've been pulling out all kinds of stuff that might be useful for this thing, trying to figure out how it all goes together. Too bad I don't have two of those. That would be great. Got this heavy duty piece of thing here. And I also have this thing here, which is eight feet by four feet. Like two and a half meters by one and a half meters ish. Ah, yes, and I still have this other piece of other other mast. This one's probably heavier duty than I want on any of this, though, so I'm probably not going to use this for anything. But this one, I'm pretty sure I'm using it. Right, maybe I need to start just drawing out everything that I think is probably going to be the way it is, and then try to fill in all the blanks from there. So, probably going how long is this? Well, my boat's 23 feet, so this is about 30 feet sticking out both ends. Yeah, let's say it's about 30 feet. Up. And I'm about six feet, so it's like five times my height. I don't want to use any of these fiberglass pieces because they're too flexible. And I need to make this really rigid. Oh, right, I've also got this pole right here, which I I don't know, I don't think I'm going to use it because I want to use it for possibly a mast for a little boat. But, you know, it's, it's here. All right, I'll tell you the kind of the sticking point I have for building the next part of this. So I need to build a frame that this attaches to. And then that has to attach to another frame. And the thing is, this has to be at the bottom. So let me just show you on the drawing. Okay, so there's my motor thing, right? And it needs some kind of frame, this yellow part. It obviously needs to be more substantial than this. It needs to connect across this way so it stays square. And it's not gonna be connected with pipes going through like this, um, just because I don't have that stuff. Which, like the obvious way to attach the yellow part to the red part is for the yellow part to somehow hook onto the top edge of the red part and just kind of rest on top of it. But then that puts this whole thing up high, so that means I need to attach the motor down on the bottom of the yellow part, because the, the propeller has to be down at the bottom, or else this gets in the way of the wood. So the propeller has to be like the, the lowest thing. But if I attach this to the bottom of the yellow thing, then it makes it so I can't put that up on top of the red thing because that's that attachment will be in the way. But that doesn't matter because I can't put it on top anyway. I somehow need to put it... If I put it right, right beside it, it might be all right. Except these red parts, I think, are going to be pretty tall. So this is going to have to be attached like on the bottom, kind of. Or I think these are going to be those red parts. I have three of these, so I'll need two for the long parts and then maybe one for the part that keeps it all square. And uh, so, yeah, it's, it's kind of gonna be tall because it'll be this way. So I'm gonna have to attach the thing on the bottom of it somehow. So one option would be to build a frame on this out of similar material that is, that is the same kind of height. That way I can just put something across and it'll rest on there and be everything will be this will be below everything which would be great except i don't have enough of, maybe i maybe i could do that another idea would be to make a frame with whatever i have and then just make some kind of pieces that come up and then attach but then that's going to have to be really strong like really rigid it can't just be some thing where it's hanging and easy to move but let me think about what i what i just said about I have three of those big rectangular pieces. So maybe if I use two of them for the main red part and then use one of them cut in half for the yellow part that attaches to this, then they could just go right next. All right, if I use two of those big rectangle parts for these, those will be two solid ones, two whole ones. Take the third one, cut it in half and make that the yellow part. 
Then I'll have to use some of the smaller stuff to make some connections across here. That should be fine. And then I'll have to, I was hoping to use the third rectangle piece to make these connections across here. But I, I should be able to find something else. Yeah, some of that other stuff I should be able to do that with and have it still be strong and pretty rigid. Okay, maybe this will work well. And then because this is the same shape as this, they can just fit right next to each other. And this can have a piece that just overlaps over this. It, I could actually have pieces that overlap over this and under it, and then have some kind of way of tightening them so they, they kind of clamp onto this red part when I, when I need it to stay where it is. Hmm. And then for this red part attaching to the blue part, maybe, well, these are tall and they have a nice flat surface on this side. So maybe I can, I mean, I'll be able to bolt things there, can rub things up again. It'll, it'll be a nice flat surface. I should be able to figure out some way of having you know, this blue part connect against here in some kind of slidey way. So yeah, I think if I do this and if I get this all right, I should be able to connect the next part fine. All right, let's, let's do this. This part here where the saw pivots on this, it's, it's not gonna move a lot, so it doesn't really need a great bearing. However, if I don't put a ball bearing in there, it's gonna start wearing and get a little loose and that cannot be sloppy. So I better put a ball bearing in there. Mm, let's see. Oh, one inch bore, stainless steel, pillow block, bearing, $37, oh, forget it. Plus I'd have to wait a month for it to get here. Well, I've got this leftover from some other thing I made. Bearing's still good. I'm gonna have to take that out. Could even use this. No, I don't want to use something that big. Because I want this to pivot, but I don't want anything sticking out far enough that it's gonna interfere with the, the clearance. I don't want to lose cutting capacity because of a bearing over here. Even even just just the ball bearing itself is gonna be kind of encroaching a little. You know what, I do have another stupid idea. Uh, no, it's a piece of copper pipe. I'll obviously have to clean that up. But I could make a, a copper bushing here. Because stainless steel on copper seems to be pretty good in terms of not wearing. So I don't want to put stainless steel against stainless steel because I think it's going to wear. Although I could check. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't wear. But as far as I know, stainless against a piece of copper lasts a pretty long time. Okay, an in-depth insight into copper bushings. Yeah, in-depth my butt. Any useful information is probably going to be between the lines. All right, I've also got what are the types and functions of the copper bushing. All right, let's see if we can learn some stuff about copper bushings. After doing some significant research for like 45 seconds, uh, I think this will be fine. It's obviously not the ideal material or perfect shape for a copper bushing, but in this case, it's very limited movement. Uh, I think it'll be fine. So I'm gonna clean this guy up, get all the corrosion and stuff off it, starting with the inside. Okay, yeah, I'm pretty sure I wanna cut these off. Jamie, where did you get that thing?
Where's the seam? These guys need to be able to fit on here nice and snug, so I put a little slot. Yeah, that should be good. Clamp that tight enough to pull that snug. That should be good. Hmm. 